Hey guys, it's Kyron my review for the mini-series on Netflix, The Haunting of Hill House. And what The Haunting of Hill House is essentially about is we center on the Crane family, and back in the 90s, they basically were taken to uh, this run-down um, mansion, basically to try to fix it up and try to make it new again, and they were only supposed to be living there for a couple of months, but what they don't realize is that the house was actually very much haunted, and uh, very much uh, had an effect on them, and in the present day has had an even bigger visceral effect on them, and after a tragic event ends up happening, the family has to come back together and basically deal with their plight, and that's really all I'm gonna say. So, The Haunting of Hill House, I was hyped for this show. I mean, just hearing that Mike Flanagan had a TV series in the works, immediately have me on board. I mean, I think he is one of the true geniuses working in horror today. I have yet to see something from him that I don't absolutely love. And what I really love about him is that, sure, he does focus on the horror, but he always does it from a character-driven perspective. And I was really excited to see how that approach would be taken to TV, because there's so much more he can explore and I was really interested in seeing how this show was going to be. I didn't watch a single trailer or anything. I went into it fairly blind, and guys, it absolutely paid off because this is probably my favorite new show of the entire year. I adore The Haunting of Hill House. I think it is truly one of the best horror shows of this entire decade, and we're just going to get into it right now. Now, we are going to talk about the cast first, but this is one of those casts where it's like, where to begin? Because really everyone here, I think, is at the top of their game. There's not a single actor in the show that I wasn't blown away by. Uh, I guess the first person to talk about is Michael Heisman, which, while it's hard to really pick, you know, one character and say, oh, they're the main character, I would probably say, yeah, Steven is the main character of the show, and he really does a great job at basically playing the skeptic of the family. He is someone who has gone out of his way to believe that all of the paranormal stuff and all of the hauntings that have been happening to his family, that is all in their head. It is all internal stuff that they need to deal with, and you can see how the and you can see how this is very much hard in him. It's it's given him this very sort of contentious relationship with his father. And has not only hardened him, but he now translates all of his, uh, you know, all, all of his doubts and all of his sort of anger towards the family, and he tries to write, and he tries to express that through his writing. And, again, Stephen is someone who could be very unlikable, but Heisman portrays him in a much more sympathetic light. You really can understand where he's coming from, and I thought that, you know, he handled that so well here. And I really loved what Heisman did here. I mean, I enjoyed him in Irreplaceable You and things like that, but he really blew me away here. I was very impressed by his work in this show, particularly in the back half of the season. I think he had some truly remarkable stuff, and I really loved where they end up going with his character, uh, and I thought that he was just phenomenal here. He was fantastic. However, someone else who very much blew me away here are both Carla Gugino and uh, Henry Thomas, who you really have to talk about these two as a duo because they're the parents who are trying to keep this family afloat. They're trying to do what they can to, um, you know, move past this. But you can see how this really does take a toll on their sense of self and what it really does to them. And especially when you contrast Hugh to how he was in the 90s to how he is now, which we'll get to a little bit later. Uh, but Henry Thomas did such such a great job here. Him and Carla Gugino work so well together. I really loved their chemistry throughout the show. And look, I think Gerald's game is the best work I've seen from Carla Gugino, but this comes pretty damn close. I mean, she has some work in the penultimate episode in the show that I truly think is some of the best work I've ever seen from her. And I really loved uh, what I got from her here. And then the rest of the cast also does a great job. This is probably the best work I've ever seen from Elizabeth Reezer. I thought she was fantastic. And I know he puts her in everything because she is his wife, but Kate Siegel is truly fantastic here. I mean, I don't think this on the level of her Hush performance because that was a breakthrough role and I wasn't really <clears throat> that 
familiar with her here, but she is just incredible. I loved what she did in this show. Um, Oliver Jackson Cohen's really good. For me, though, the standout of this entire thing is Victoria Pedretti as the character of Nell, who I really can't say too much about. This is a character that if you say too much, you're going to basically ruin the entire show, but let's just say she is someone who is probably the most affected by the events of Hill House. It has very much uh, resonated with her, and you can see her her trying to move past it, but what she ends up doing in the show is just fantastic. Just her facial expressions alone, it's one of the best portrayals of fear, but also of sleep paralysis that I think I've ever seen, and I've really never seen anything from her before, but I really hope I do again, because she honestly blew me away here. I thought that she was just phenomenal in this show. And then the kid actors as well also are all great. Lulu Wilson is, of course, great, as well as McKenna Grace. I mean, I expect those two to be great, though. Uh, the other kid actors I wasn't as familiar with, I also thought were really good. No one particularly stands out in that bunch, but they really all do a great job. And like I said, I think really everyone just kills it in the show. Even some of the smaller performances here, like, say, Annabeth Gish, for example, not a main character, but when she's on, she is phenomenal. Uh, same with her husband. I thought, uh, you know, uh, Robert Longstreet as Horace, he also was great in this show. Just really everyone kills it here. I, I know I keep saying that, but truly, this is one of the best ensembles I've seen in any piece of media this year, and I was so impressed by the entire cast here. But now we really need to get to, I think, the thing that really brings this home, and that is Mike Flanagan's directing, which is just unparalleled. I mean, I've been impressed by what he's done in many of his other projects, but this is far and away his masterpiece, and for very good reason. I mean, his tone in this show, it's just so, um, it, it, it's so distinct, and it's a show that it's constantly has you just emotionally drained, and I really love the way he goes about it, but he never does it in a way where it feels like a soap opera. Everything that happens in the show feels real. It feels like a can very much happen, and I really did love the way he exhibited that here. This is very much a horror show, but to its core, it's actually a family drama, and that's what I really loved about it. I've heard a lot of people say this is like the horror version of This Is Us, and to be honest, it's actually a pretty apt comparison, because Similar to This Is Us, there is a lot of emotional stuff in this show. I don't think it's nearly as emotionally manipulative as This Is Us. That's a whole other subject, but, you know, I think what the show does so well is it's able to combine that drama with that horror, and those two things just blend so well together, and I really loved what Flanagan was able to do. He's not necessarily trying to scare you. The show has scared many. I know a lot of people who said they couldn't even finish this show, but... It's more, to, it's more so to elicit a reaction out of you. It's more to get you to, um, you know, emotionally care for this family, and I think he does a great job with that. In terms of the writing, this is some of the best I've seen of the entire year. I mean, something the show does so well and makes such a brilliant choice is almost every single episode of the show only focuses on one character, and it makes a lot of sense because there are seven uh, children in the show, but then you also have Hugh and you have Olivia, and they also have their own separate episodes, and this way we're able to get a very introspective look at every single character in a way that if it was done as a movie, you just simply couldn't do, and I think it was a very smart idea to make this into a television miniseries, because we're really able to get that window into every single character in a way that I just don't think we'd be able to do um, in, you know, in a movie, and I think he did such a great job with that, but what he also does so well is what these characters are dealing with. Every single one of these characters they have some sort of fear that's boggled up inside of them, and there's something that they just aren't really facing. They're kind of avoiding it, but the show is really them learning how to internalize it, but also learn how to process it and maybe move forward and try to, you know, and try to let go of it. And that is something that can be hard for a lot of people to do, something that we keep boggled up inside of us. And a lot of people have compared it to Hereditary, but where Haunting of Hill has very 
much, uh, you know, differs from that is that this isn't so much the thoughts that we keep bottled up inside, it's the fears that we have. For example, the character of Theo is someone who has a hard time opening up to people. She very much has closed herself off. She is kind of in this relationship with this girl, but she doesn't really want to get into anything serious. And we see throughout the show why she is this way. And we flash back to her childhood and how she was very similar in that way. And it, it's very effective. And the way they're able to do that, I just really loved. And again, I think it just really goes to show how well written this series truly is. And that's very much uh, echoes the rest of the show. Anytime, something the show does so well is anytime we focus on one of these characters, it'll go from the present to the past and go back and show why this character is this way and what effect this really did have on them. Because every single one of these characters, they did face these ghosts and these paranormal sort of spirits that were with them, but they've each had a different effect on them. And I thought that was a really cool idea they went about it because they could have easily just done something oh where they're all scared but the show is that's barely scratching the surface if you say these characters are emotionally scarred by what's happened you know we can see that this has very much changed them completely and how they are able to move on from it i just thought was an incredible idea and there are so many things this show does so well in terms of emotion. The show is also very much about trying to deal with very heavy themes like depression and alcoholism and also uh, infidelity, but also the idea of suicide and loss. I mean, there's a lot of really deep ideas that are explored in the show, and they never feel overly sentimental. It never feels like Mike Flanagan is preaching to you. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, Mike Flanagan is too much... He's trying to be too much of a highbrow horror director, and sure, there is a lot of highbrow stuff here, but it always comes across as purposeful. It always makes sense for the story, and it never feels like shock value. It never feels gratuitous. It always does have some sort of purpose within the story, and I think it is very well handled in that regard. But something else the show does really well is it really does take its time in telling the story. It doesn't tell you everything at first. In fact, it is much more interested with seeing you care about this family. And the way it's able to do that through the flashbacks is really well done. We get the sense of who this family is, that Olivia and Hugh are people who, like I said, they're trying to make the house better. That is their intent. They're there to, you know, rebuild things. There are things that aren't working anymore, and they're there to fix it up. It's not till later on that things start to get a lot more serious and they start to realize that there's something much more sinister at play, but for a while it's very much just watching this family engage in being one and seeing that stark contrast with the present time where they are very much fractured. A lot of them aren't speaking to each other anymore. There's a lot of things that the family isn't acknowledging, uh, you know, Theo and Shirley are very much not on good terms. Uh, like I said, Hugh and Steven, they're really not on good terms. And it's heartbreaking to watch just because you see how loving of a family they used to be and how this ultimately just puts such a rift in their family. And it's really just devastating. And I really did love uh, how much the show did take its time with that because if the flashbacks were weren't included, which I mean they needed to be, but if the flashbacks weren't included, I don't think the show would be nearly as strong as it is, and I don't think we would care as much for these characters as much as we truly do, and that's something else that the show implemented I think so well here. And in the same way it does with scares, it also does with very saddening scenes. I mean, there's a lot of great dialogue in the show. Some of the best of the entire year. Some of the best scenes in the show are just monologues the characters have. Hell, there is one episode, episode 7, where we focus on this character that we really haven't seen that much until now. But this one monologue that he gives to, um, you know, to Henry Thomas's character, it's so effective and it really 
does stick with you, and you can tell what Mike Flanagan is really trying to say. He, he's trying to, it's basically supposed to be a social commentary on the idea of fear, and the idea of trying to face your inner demons, and not ignore them, and actually try to change it, and do something about it. It's a terrifying thing to do, but that's something that he, I think, handled very well here. There's a lot of great scenes like that. It's some of the best dialogue I have seen in any show this year, and that's something else that I just really love. The attention to detail was so spot on here, and I absolutely love the dialogue in this show. I could honestly go on and on when it, when it comes to the writing, but I'm not going to because if I say anything more, it's going to spoil the show. I know a lot of people have finished this show, but I, I want to be considerate to the people that haven't uh, started the show yet because I, I think, you know, knowing as little as possible will make the show that much more effective. But, but now I really want to get into the set design of the show, which is holy shit. I mean, it is on another level here. The look of the mansion overall, it's huge. And there's so many places that they can go with it. There's one episode in particular where it's a bunch of like one take scenes. It's episode six. And I know a lot of people have talked about it, but it's a lot of one take scenes. And there's one scene in particular where they basically show you the entire mansion and you just see how huge it really is and just how detailed everything is. I mean, there are so many various places that these characters can roam around and it's very, uh, it's a very creative but also a very cryptic setting in that sense. When bad things are happening, you kind of feel like you're trapped there and I think they handled that so well. I mean, the way the show plays with its set, I thought was very smart in that regard and I really love that a lot, but also the look of the ghost um, just looks so real. Nothing about it looks like an effect. Everything about it, the makeup and all that is so on point and characters like, say, the bent neck lady, who you will find out who that is. I'm not going to say what that means, but characters like that, um, you know, the look of and feel of them, uh, I just really, you know, the cinematography really does uh, contribute to that very well, and I really love just the look of everything in the show. I think that it's some of the best, um, I, I, you know, some of the best uh, set design and just, um, you know, just, just effects overall that I have seen all year. I really loved the look of this show. The score as well is so good. I really can't stop humming like the main theme of this show, especially in the more uh, in, in the more emotional scenes. There's this one score that plays that really just kind of stuck with me since I've watched it. And the editing, this the show itself, there are a lot of episodes that go on for a long time, but I'm glad they do because they're able to flesh out the character as much as they possibly could. Someone like Nell, for example, her entire, the entire episode is like an hour and like I think 15 minutes. It's the longest episode of the whole show, but it needed to be. It needed to be that long because we really needed to explore that character as best as we could. And I'm glad that the show didn't try to shy away from that. And I, I really love the way they handled that overall. But now I really do want to get into some spoilers, so if you haven't seen The Haunting of Hill House, please, please go away. Even if you've seen the other adaptations of The Haunting, trust me, this show does something different with that premise entirely, and I think that this show is best to go into knowing basically nothing. Where to begin, honestly? I mean, there is so much that goes down in this show, so I'm gonna try to be as brief as possible here because, I mean, if I were to go into everything, this would be like an hour-long video. Obviously, yes, we know that Nell dies, we know everything that happens at the funeral, which was just devastating to watch. I mean, especially when Steven and Hugh are just hashing out everything, and we have that moment where Steven says that, like, the wrong parent died, and you see the detestment that he really does have for Hugh. I mean, it's... The, the way they went about Hugh in the show was very surprising because I, I looked it up seeing that, oh, Hugh's the antagonist, but, you know, he really wasn't in the show at the end of the day. Hugh really did end up being, I think, the uh, actual hero of the show. He was someone who um, was very much misunderstood in that way and I think was a very interesting way to go about his character. 
And then, of course, there's everything with Shirley and Theo and everything that really does go down there. But what I really want to get into with this show and what I really want to talk about is the ending because it has left a lot of people very divided on how to feel about the show. A lot of people say, oh, the first nine episodes are phenomenal, but the it does not stick the landing. And I would very much disagree with that because, again, they're missing the point of the show. I've heard too many people compare this show to Murder House and... I don't think that's a good way to look at it at all, because again, the show is much less about how sinister and how demonic these ghosts are, because sure, a lot of them are very tempting in that way. I mean, especially when it comes to Olivia, that was all through temptation. Same with Nell, that was all through just simply being tempted. Um, but... Um, you know, but, but the show really, to its core, is about these characters moving on from their grief and moving on from their pain. And that's very much the way to end this show. I mean, especially knowing that it's going to be a miniseries, there really was no better way than either they stay trapped in the house forever and they're not able to move on from it, or they do, and I thought they handled it really well. I like that there was a two-year time jump here. I like that we see that these characters are trying to get better. We see Steven is actually working on his relationship with his wife. You know, he was going to leave her, but he's actually coming back, and he's now... You know, he's still writing about the family, but he's writing about them in a more positive way, and that's something else that I really loved um, seeing. You know, seeing Theo just take off her gloves and realizing that she's now finally starting to open up to people, and she's actually started a serious relationship with her girlfriend, I thought was a very nice moment. Seeing Shirley finally confess to her husband about that affair, I mean, and, and seeing Luke completely clean, and him being able to... He's just happy. He's able to move forward. He's finally been able to deal with that grief. I mean, obviously, he's had that sort of spiritual connection to Nell for so long, but he's finally been able to move past it. It was just a very effective moment, and all of this was done through Hugh sacrificing himself because Hugh was the person who knew what was going on. He was the one who was always trying to help them out, but Stephen just never let him. Stephen always thought that Hugh was trying to actively ruin their lives. He thought that he was poisoning them with all of this, you know, you know, he was kind of brainwashing them in that way, but we know that's very much not the case. And that moment between him and Olivia, and Olivia giving that face to them, it sure, it's not a happy one, because she knows that she's never going to be able to see her children again. It, it is very devastating in that way. You know, she's been reunited with Hugh, and sure, she has uh, Nell, but she's not going to be able to be reunited with them until they die, and it is a very saddening moment in that regard, but it's a happy Happy moment for all of them because they are able to now move forward. They've moved on from the trauma of Hill House. They now know what's been going on with the Red Room and things like that, which that was an incredible reveal where we realized the Red Room was basically whatever they needed it to be. I thought it was a really cool idea and I really love the way they did that. Um, but the ending especially I thought was very effective. I really could not have asked for a better ending. And for a show that was so emotional and was so, um, you know, it was so emotionally draining in that way and was so hard to watch at points, for it to end on a really uh, happy note, I thought was actually a really good idea. It made a lot of sense. And it just, it felt, you felt that finality. It felt very rewarding in that regard. And I really love the way they did conclude this show. So overall, The Haunting of Hill House is easily one of the most well-crafted horror shows I think I've seen all decade. It honestly comes pretty close to Penny Dreadful, and you guys know how much I adored that show, but I can't even compare it to that because this is a different beast entirely. It's much more of a character drama, and seeing how this has affected the family, and it is much less concerned about scaring you, and more just uh, affecting you in a way that other shows just simply don't. It has one of the best ensembles I've seen on TV all year, um, or any piece of media 
media, I'd say, all year. It has some incredibly inventive scares that I thought were really well done. It does a lot of cool things uh, camera-wise as well. There's a lot of great camera work in the show. The directing is just spot on. Mike Flanagan, I mean, I, I can't wait to see what he's going to do with Dr. Sleep after this. I mean, his directing, like I said, it's just... It is the definition of just masterful directing in every single way possible. The attention to detail, the character work, everything that I love about the show is really there. And I think everything was just so well written. I think every character arc was so satisfying. It gave me everything that I could possibly want out of the show. So for those reasons alone, I have to give The Haunting of Hill House what it rightfully deserves, which is absolutely an A+. Plus. I know you guys may think I'm overreacting here, but I, tr think about it. I really have not given many A-pluses to TV shows this year, but this is one where I really can't see anything wrong with it. I really can't think of anything that I would have done differently, and that's when you know you have a really great show on display. I think Flanagan was able to get everything he really wanted out of this show, and I do think it is his best work yet, easily, but that's really it for The Haunting of Hill House. Uh, please, if you have not seen this show, give it a watch immediately. I mean, even if you don't like horror, I still think this is absolutely worth your time because it's just so well-crafted and uh, it's everything I love about a great character drama. But that's really this video. Hope you guys enjoy. We'll see you guys in my next video and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.